lighting is terrible and I apologize but once again having, <laughs> sorry, technical difficulties with my camera so we're gonna make it do let me turn off Beyonce so I decided to just kind of do this little chit chat get ready with me whatever because I don't have um my actual camera to film with so I didn't want to go too long without posting a video recording something for you guys so I haven't put makeup on probably in like a week and a half two weeks just because that's just been the way my life has been going I haven't had anywhere to go which we'll talk about why I haven't had anywhere to go um, but yeah so I was just kind of in the mood to do some makeup and I just got out of the shower washed my hair conditioned it um, I have leave-in conditioner I have the my handy dandy Cantu that I just put all over my hair ran through it with a Demon brush and I put this on just to kind of flatten it and I'm middle part gang now I know I probably look like Marcus Houston but whatever <laughs> so anyway I'm just gonna do what I do and we'll talk about some things I have my coffee here and some water this is my first glass glass my first cup of coffee for the day it's 12 on the dot I'm trying to wean myself off of coffee because it's so good but it's I mean I don't know how terrible it is for you I don't feel like I have a caffeine dependency so to say but I think it's definitely a big part of my day and when I don't have it I feel I feel it like oh you didn't have your coffee today so well I'm gonna put some moisturizer on I haven't done that yet I have this Olay Regenerist Luminous I don't know if it's gonna let you see it but anyway I got the whole line I got the luminous line oh almost forgot I have to put this miracle boost concentrate on first I'm assuming that's just how I've been doing it so I got this from Walmart and I mean I like it I I just feel like my skin this is a burn to burn myself on the oven <laughs> um I feel like my skin just is dull you know like I don't necessarily have bad skin but it's just really dull and I mark easy like that was a pimple it's gone now but now I have a scar so and these circles under my eyes I'm really 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 giving a lot of consideration into getting filler um, to help kind of combat that and so I don't look like a like a corpse when I wake up or if I have a little you know less sleep than normal I look crazy like it looks I look very sunken and drawn in and Oh, that's hot. Um, that's just not cute. I'm gonna put the moisturizer on now. And this stuff is really light. It doesn't feel sticky at all. It smells good. Just kind of a light smell. Nothing like overwhelming. And I try to do this every day, but I'm just one of those people that is like really for it for the first few days you know a week or two and then I kind of fall off so I'm trying to get better with that so this is the eye cream ultimate eye cream I just I feel like my 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 situation is at the point that no creams or anything is gonna help it like I'm gonna have to get filler to, to fill in because it's just the vein you can see the vein through the thin skin and that's why it causes a shadow um, and I think with this being a hereditary problem on top of having you know weight loss I think it just kind of makes my face look really sunken so after I put all that on I put Mario rose water spray on just to seal the deal and I'll be using this a lot as I do my makeup because it's everything so yeah I guess I'll just start with what's been going on in my life which is 
it's a lot, but then it's not a lot at the same time. So I don't know. Like I, I just, I'm at a point where it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know when I'm going to figure this out. Like when is, you know, life going to start making sense to me and I, I'm able to understand why I'm going through the things that I'm going through and what what I can do to, to change it because it's like, it's frustrating. Um, side note, I got my eyebrows threaded for the first time. It's been about, I think it's been like three weeks and they're just now starting to come in. It was, she did really good. So I'm going to take my NYX pencil and just start filling them in. I feel like the sirens go off more here than anywhere. And I live in a really small country town, but there's always a siren somewhere. So yeah. Anyway. I, um... I guess the biggest thing, if you follow my social media... I um, kind of went through a really difficult, I'm just filling them in lightly, by the way. I'm not going to, like, I'm not doing a whole lot of makeup. This is just going to be something light because I really don't have anywhere to go. I mean, I do have to go get a couple things in the store, but I'm not going to do, like, a full beat. Um, I had a, another miscarriage. This is my third one, and by far this has been the hardest one to deal with, the hardest one to make sense of. Not that I made sense of the other two, because I didn't, I haven't thus far. I still don't know why, um, but this one I was very, I was really confident that this was going to happen for me this time. I I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't because like it's hard to explain. Like my confidence came from you know, I I felt like it was real. You know, I you guys if you've watched my my previous miscarriage video, you know that my husband and I were actively trying to get pregnant. So it wasn't like you know, we were just going to have this random baby pop up out of nowhere. We were, you know, I was tracking and all that and I had kind of stopped doing that after the second miscarriage, but I still knew when my period was coming and I still knew based off of, you know, that when I would be ovulating. So it wasn't like, oh, hurry up, you know, I'm ovulating right now, let's go do it. I just knew that there were certain times where my chances of getting pregnant were a lot higher than other times. And I kept that in the back of my mind, you know. So this time around... I um I took tests and the last two times that I'd been pregnant and I would take a test the lines were very very faint. This time they were super dark and that is that contributed to my confidence in this pregnancy because unlike before it seemed as though my body wasn't it wasn't developing or producing the HCG as you know as fast as it should have been and I you know obviously I don't know facts I, I just was going off of my experience and I thought that this time being that they were really dark and the, the test came up positive it seemed like a really strong positive to me I thought oh well this must be the real thing you know and on top of that I'm like there's just no way this is going to happen to me a third time like it God's not going to let that happen and I'll come back to that uh, you know, that little tidbit again. But, um, yeah, so, you know, I struggled with, should I tell my husband? Should I not tell him? You know, because the last time that this happened, he was devastated. And, the you know, the time before that, he was devastated. And I was just like, I don't, <laughs> I just don't want to put him through that again. Like, that's just not something that I want you know, I don't want to disappoint him again. I don't want him to feel that those feelings again. But at the same time, I had already had two miscarriages and 
you know, trying to be logical and not be negative at the same time is very difficult because logic can come off as negativity. And there, you know, I've had people like, oh, don't think negative because your body will respond to that. But at the same time, I had to prepare myself for the worst case scenario because that's what I was used to and that's what had happened to me before. So no, I did not want to lose the baby, but I had to sort of put that thought in my head like this just might not work out the way you want it to, Lusa, and it's probably a better idea if your husband is aware and he's there to comfort you and be there if if it does go bad, you know? So that that thought, you know, I I struggled with that for a while. I knew for about I knew that I was pregnant for a good week before I said anything to him. And according to last period and all that other stuff that you calculate, I was coming up on six weeks pregnant. So I felt that was the farthest that I've gotten, you know, with any of my pregnancies, you know, the last two. So I I just really was feeling really good this time. I really thought that it was time, you know, that, that, we had just gotten, you know, we just purchased a, a bigger vehicle. So we had a second vehicle. We have a second vehicle in the in the family, which is something that we had discussed, you know, when we were talking about having another baby, you know, we we're like, we need more space in our car because, you know, we have a really little, you know, just like a midsize or whatever sedan. And it's enough for the two of us, but it's not enough for the two of us, his son, my son, and a car seat, like we would have been packed into that little car. So, you know, it kind of worked out. My husband, um, you know, he had started a, a position that, you know, it's, it's, he's, it's a really good job. He's doing really well, you know, so it kind of all seemed like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe it's time. Maybe this is the real thing. And that is what, you know, motivated me to tell him. Um, and I kind of was like, you know, I still was very, I was very scared to tell him because I just didn't want, I just did not want him to experience that again. And I, you know, not to, not to undermine men and their feelings, but I didn't, I wasn't aware before, you know, until he told me, obviously, that that, you know, me losing the last two that that affected him the way it did. But, you know, according to him, it was hard for him to deal with. It was hard for him. The same things, you know, obviously not exactly the same, but the feelings that I felt, confusion, why is this happening? What did we do wrong, et cetera, et cetera. He felt those things too. Um, I'm about, I'm going to start putting foundation on. This is the e.l.f. Poreless Face Primer. It's one of my favorites. It smells like tea tree. So, yeah, so, you know, I, I told my, my best friend and... I asked him, I said, do you think that I should tell, you know, tell Jonathan, my husband, and he was like, you know, we kind of went back and forth, because he knew, he was, you know, what, had come with me a few times to buy pregnancy tests and stuff, so, you know, he was like, yeah, I think you should, you know, because, you know, and I, I explained to him my logic, and he was like, that makes a lot of sense, and, you know, all that, so I told him, he was excited, and, you know, so I kind of... At that point, after telling him, I was like, okay, here we are, you know, hey God, let's, let's, let's keep this, you know, I want this to happen. We want this to happen, you know, and I told my husband, another reason I wanted to tell him is because he's very, very strong in his faith. He prays a lot and I do too, but I just, I really wanted him to know so we could have like double prayers going up about this, you know, because if he didn't know, then he wouldn't be praying for that in particular. You know what I mean? Um, this is a Maybelline Master Strobing Liquid Illuminator. This is in the uh, it's in 100. I'm just going to put this all over my face. And, you know, I want to look like a, a disco ball today. So, yeah, he was excited and we prayed. And I said, you know, I think that us praying is going to be, you know, instrumental in this whole process you know and I don't necessarily believe in only praying when you need stuff because we don't but I think if it's something really important to you and you want to really emphasize that you should <laughs> I think you should definitely 
you know, I mean, not that God doesn't already know that it's important because he knows your heart and your thoughts and all that, but it doesn't hurt to just, you know, be like, hey, really solidify this one for me, you know, I'm trying to decide what foundation I want to go with because I'm kind of like in a weird, pale area point in my life. I don't know what color I should be doing. I think I'm going to do the mate this. I'm going to do my, um, my fit me matte and poreless in 235. This is pure beige. I have three more colors in here because I'm going to start getting darker. Hopefully as the weather gets better and I can get some sun and I'm thinking about doing a, a spray tan or a, you know, spray tan or whatever that stuff is. So just cause I hate being pale. Like the pale is real. So yeah, um, I don't want to keep rambling on about this because it is really a long story and I might just do a separate video about it, but that's my stomach. It sounds like that when I drink coffee, but, um, I just really don't understand why this happened. And earlier when I said, why? why would God allow this to happen? I didn't mean it in a sense like he, he had anything to do with it. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. I really struggled with that. I really struggled with not blaming God for this because I felt like we prayed so hard about this. He knew, knows currently you know, how important this was to us and how badly we wanted this to happen. And I just, it, 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 now, you know, not now, I always knew, but when you're in the, when you're in the midst of tragedy like that, it's, it's very hard to be logical and think reasonable about things. And, you know, I, I, I was raised to believe that God is real and God, you know, he will answer prayers and he will bless you, but he is not currently the one in charge of the way the world is going right now. And I mean, that's biblical. He did, you know, we are all kind of just waiting for him to take back control. And I think until that happens, bad things, horrible tragedies are going to continue to happen in this world because he is not the ruler. You know, the man downstairs is in charge and he doesn't want you to be happy and he doesn't want things to go well in your life. He doesn't want you to flourish. But I don't want this to be all about that. But that that is something that something that I really struggled with and I had to really check myself before I got to a really, really dark place where I was blaming God for this. And that is not, that is not the way I am. I do not, I don't do that. But this was very, very difficult to comprehend. It still is. Talking about it is, um, it's still hard, you know, and I, I, I'm not over it. It's only been maybe two weeks, but, you know, and I, I have been off work since then. I, I, you know, I took a leave of absence because I'm like, I just can't go back. Like I had told my manager at work, um, just because I wanted to, again, <laughs> I, I had this like logical side of it that I was like, I need, somebody needs to know because if something happens, I don't want them to be like, oh, she just disappeared. She just stopped coming to work. Like, no, this is why, you know? So that was that. And it was very, it's probably still, I mean, I, I still can't talk about it a hundred percent, but it was very, very hard. And I don't, I don't feel like I'll ever get over this one. And I didn't get over the other two, but this one just really, it really hit me hard. And I, I don't, I still don't understand. So I'm going to be going to see this specialist that supposedly she works with people who've had, um, recurrent, recurrent pregnancy loss. And, uh, hopefully she can, you know, we can come to some 
conclusions. But like I said, I'm going to make a separate video about that because the story behind all of this is, and I don't want to be here rambling for too long. So that's that. And not that's that like, oh, dismiss it. No big deal. But I just don't, <laughs> I don't want to dwell on that because I don't want to put myself back in that frame of mind. So um, anyway, I'm going to go in with my concealer. I have so many concealers. I still haven't found the one that I love, but whatever. I like this one so far. This is the Instant Age Rewind um, Dark Circle Eraser. And I have this in two colors because I like to mix it because this is a little too, too bright and it kind of accentuates darkness if you don't, um, I feel like if you don't mix it with something or if you don't color correct, which I don't because I just have way too much texture under here to color correct and put concealer and foundation and powder. It's too much. So I go in with the other color, which is medium, and I put that down first. And I've been lately trying, not lately because I haven't put makeup on in weeks, but um, I've been trying not to take the product all the way up underneath my eyes. I kind of gather it down and then blend it up when I start blending with my beauty blender. So then I take the light one and I kind of just go over that just to mix it together. And it kind of helps. And then I do use this one to highlight and stuff because I like the light, the lighter color to highlight. And lately my skin's been going crazy. My body's been going insane altogether. And I'm pretty sure it has a lot to do with the fact that I had another miscarriage and my hormones are just... Like, I, I don't really know essentially what exactly it does to your body, but like I've been eating a lot more and... Like, my body has just been acting out, like, <laughs> rebelling against me completely. And at this point, it's like, until I start, you know, like, I go see this specialist or whatever, I'm just going to, you know, try my best to eat right and try to get some exercise in. But I'm not going to anticipate any major changes in my body right now because it's just been through a lot of trauma. And I don't, I don't know... You know, like I said, I don't know where where it's at. Like, I don't know what, what's going on hormonally that maybe is my body producing more or less of something. And that's why, you know, it's going nuts. I don't know. But, you know, I, I am going to be working on making some slight changes, like counting macros, which is harder than I thought. <laughs> um... I'm going to start cutting out some things like dairy, um, carbs as much as possible, which is very difficult because I'm a carb addict. And, um, you know, just little trying to drink more water and all that good stuff. So I have been at the gym. I've been uh, working out and it's been really good. I feel really good about that. I always love to work out, but you know, I think that that was tremendous in helping me kind of, you know, get get things back in check in my life after this miscarriage, because I really was not to go back on it again, but I really was feeling like I could have slipped. I was. I mean, I still am. But I mean, I could have really, really got into a deep depression. Um, it, it was hard to not. I'm going to set this with my airspun. Uh, powder that I always use so working out and you know I busted out all my old gym gear I went and got some new stuff and you know it kind of it helped just getting kind of you know looking cute to go to the gym and being able to have that time to myself to just work on myself and I really feel like it's a it's a good form of therapy it's it's very very productive and it's another reason why, you know, being off work was really essential for me because I had that time to just kind of get back into the swing of things for me, for Lisa, you know, and not have to be stressed out over things I can't control and people at work and they're, you know what I mean? Like that just, I didn't need that. <laughs> Going back to work would have been a huge mistake. I probably would have like quit in a really dramatic fashion or something, you know, or gotten fired for saying some slick shit because my emotions were all, all crazy and whatever. I'm just setting my face with the uh, Fit Me 
powder. So yeah, um, at this point I am going to go back to work, but I'm going to dramatically reduce my schedule. I'm only going to work on the weekends because I really, and I've said this so many times guys, but this is like, I really need to devote more of my energy into this channel because I do have an audience. You guys do enjoy my videos and I cannot take that for granted. Like I worked so hard to get to this point. I cannot let that slip. I, I just can't do it. So I'm going to work on the weekends and that money is going to be the money to supplement this channel. That's my goal. You know, I'm not going to say too much else because I'm trying to do this thing where I don't tell the world what my plans are because then the world will try to fuck you and ruin your plans. So I'm just going to really step it up with this channel. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to go in and contour my face with this e.l.f. Contour Palette. I'm going to take this shade right here on this brush. These brushes, by the way, I don't know if you guys follow my Snapchat, I snapped them. I found them at the Goodwill. It was this one and like three other face ones and then three eye ones. They were like eight bucks and they're real techniques and I guess it's probably like a limited edition thing that they don't make anymore, but they're good. Like I really like them. So I was kind of excited about that. I really love finding gems. Like it makes me feel hella important. Like, oh, you're a thrifter, you know? So yeah, that's that. And I guess, I mean, I don't really have an update on my body because I've nothing's happened. I've actually gained weight. I don't know if it's weight or water or whatever, but I'm up a few pounds, which isn't too abnormal because I do fluctuate. Like I fluctuate between 203, I have yet to get under 200 pounds. Between 203 and like 207, I fluctuate all the time. You know, when it's that time of the month or I ate a little reckless over the weekend, I'm not drinking enough water, etc. Then, you know, I'll go up and usually it comes right off as soon as I get myself back on track. But like I said, I'm not, I'm trying not to stress myself out too much because at this point there's really nothing that I can do until I start kind of figuring out what my body is even going through at this point because I don't know you know I don't know what the what's going on in there so I'm not going to do anything to my eyes um I think I'm just going to take this highlighter I'm going to highlight underneath and then put a little something in my crease and then just put some mascara on because like I said I'm not going anywhere and I'm not going to do a full face I don't you know this Lighting is not ideal for what I would, you know, if I wanted to do a full face, I wouldn't want to record it this way because it wouldn't do it justice. I can say this, that I am getting a lot better with my makeup, which I know people are going to be like, oh, you're good. But like to me, I really noticed a change in my skills, you know, like, which is amazing. It makes me feel really good and confident about that so oh um I did I had every intent on planning on uh, recording a video about my gum procedure but then that kind of happened right around the same time as the miscarriage and everything kind of went to shit so I am gonna do that one here eventually but I had a gingivectomy which is simply them going in with a, uh, a laser and cutting your gums to expose more of your tooth. And it basically just um, is the answer to a gummy smile. So I had that done. It's coming up on a month and this is how my gums look now. So before it was like, where my top lip is, is was gums. So he cut up and made my tooth more rounded. Basically, it's it's cosmetic. It's just, it's to make your, you know, to make your smile look better. And that's something that I had been really self-conscious about since childhood. And I didn't know that there was a solution to it. When I found out that there was, I was like, oh, sign me up. I'm getting that done. And I'm really happy with it. I'm, I'm, you know, it's 
one of those things that you do for yourself. Like you don't have to explain yourself. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and curl my lashes. Maybe I'll put some false. Nah, I'm not. Um, that being said, let's talk about that. I've kind of really adapted this new new way of thinking, attitude, whatever you want to call it, where I'm just not going to be explaining myself, my intentions to anyone that doesn't matter. Like I I'm at the point where like I'm I feel like I am so so freaking transparent with majority of the things in my life. Like you literally can go on my social media handles and basically see the story of my life. Like everything that has happened to me that has affected and, and changed who I am and made me the person that you see on this screen. Like you literally can go and see that. And I'm not going to burden myself with trying to explain my intentions to people that don't matter, you know? And I think that that's easier said than done because as human beings, we are, we are like programmed to defend ourselves. Like if you come at me, I'm going to defend myself because I think I need you to know that what you are assuming about me is wrong. And that has been my mantra, I guess, on on social media since the beginning, you know, especially after the surgery and I was, you know, exposed to way more of an audience than I had ever anticipated. Like, I just felt like I had to have my guard up because, and I mean, a lot of the times I was right and people, you know, oh, easier, it's easier said than done. Oh, just don't pay it any mind or whatever. I'm like, you don't understand, like, people come for me hard. And it's like, how much of this am I supposed to take? Because, oh, that's what they do. They're trolls. Okay, well, that doesn't make it right. And that doesn't make it easy to deal with for me at all. Like, I'm, that shit hurts. Especially when, you know, you're working really hard at, at changing what they're talking about. Like, how are you going to insult somebody about their weight that's losing weight. I, I've talked about that before. I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. So, you know, at this point, it's like, I don't, I'm not even going to waste my time on trying to convince people that I am the person that I know that I am and that I'm the person that I say that I am. That's on you if you want to just insist that you know me and you don't, go ahead. Continue to waste your time because I'm not going to be there with you as you waste it. That's what's not going to happen. I'm going to be enjoying my life, continuing to improve and better myself, and that's that. Like, I'm not going to... Don't nobody got time for that. So that's where I'm at with that kind of stuff. Like, it's just... Social media is, you know, it has its, its good points and it has its really fucked up points. And... That's the the battle when it comes to social media. You know, it's like, how much of this is worth it? Because, you know, I think the best thing Instagram has ever done is turned off commenting. <laughs> like, bitch, just look at the picture and be mad. Or, I don't know, I guess you can go on another picture, an old one, and comment your hatred on that one. I don't really care. Like, that, that has changed things tremendously. Because it's like, if it's something that I have a feeling people are going to not exactly be warm or welcome to which once again should not be my problem but you know I'm I, I think about that stuff I'll just turn off the commenting and you just keep scrolling I guess so that's that but what was I talking about oh my teeth so yeah I I had that done and it, it was for me it wasn't because I was Nobody, I don't mean, I don't know if people noticed it. Everybody now that I've had it done is like, oh, I didn't even tell. I couldn't tell a difference, whatever. But it was something that I noticed and I didn't like. So I fixed it and I'm happy with it. I'm very, very happy with it. Sorry I haven't been telling you what I've been using. But I'm going to go ahead, now that my face is pretty much done, um, I'm going to go ahead and spray 
my Mario on and then go in and highlight. This stuff, it just feels so good on your face. So that's that. So yeah, that's pretty much what's been going on in Lisa's life the last, since the beginning of the year, pretty much. And I, I feel like when it comes to like the miscarriage thing, I did, I, I had wrote this poem and I shared it on my Instagram and Facebook and then I took it down off Instagram because I just, I don't know. I do that sometimes, but, um, it was just, I know people are, how, you know, how are you able to talk about it and whatever. And I think everybody has their own, their own method of coping, their own, you know, way. And I'm not saying that that was a coping mechanism for me. That's just what I felt at that moment. You know, like I was looking at um, quotes and stuff on Pinterest and I was looking actually I was looking at um I started off looking at what got me to the quotes was I was looking at tattoos like if there you know I wanted to see if there were other women who had gotten like you know tattoos kind of commemorating and memorializing you know their the babies that had been lost and there are some really 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 pretty ones and I'm really going to consider getting one I really want to get something Cause it's like, I need a little bit of closure. I need something because this is like, those are, they were developing babies. Like they're, they, they weren't just a little mass of cells, especially this last one, like that, you know, had almost had a heartbeat and you know, it, that's, it's a being, you know, and regardless of whether we made it to the full nine months or not, that was a developing human being. And that, human being died and I felt like I should I, I just need something to kind of memorialize that and you know just have something to remind me and not remind me I don't know what I'm trying to say but I I think like a really pretty you know just kind of memorial tattoo would be just something nice to have and I don't have any tattoos I've never gotten one so this is the third time that I've lost a baby, so I, I I just feel like it's something I should do. And you know, so if you guys know of any Pinterest has tons, but I just I don't know, I still don't really know what how I wanna want it to look. So yeah. I'll go ahead and set my face with my elf setting spray. I have this problem where hopefully it doesn't happen right now where my bottom mascara just gets everywhere and it's annoying as fuck. so yeah I just wanted to do a little something something I'm gonna go ahead and dry my hair off camera and then I will return and we'll keep chatting a little bit okay okay so I'm back I did it a little more than I said I was gonna do okay you know how it goes um I I diffused my hair. So this is my hair now, girls. I definitely got some growth going on. I'm very, 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 very excited that it's finally growing. Um, I wasn't going to part it in the middle, but then I was like, I kind of look like, um, what's her name? What was her name? Chanel from um, Save the Last Dance. Yeah, Carrie Washington. So I was like, let me throw in a choker and some big hoops. She'd be like, what was what was it that she said to her? She was like, don't leave your shit on the floor. <laughs> that was my movie. That's crazy how she did that and now she's like popular for Scandal. Very, two very different characters. But started from the bottom, now she here. So yeah, I'm done with this. I put a little bit of liner on my eyes. I put my green contacts in. I don't know, I was just like, fuck it. Let's get fancy to go nowhere. Um. I'm going to go pick up some something from my mom's house, and then I have to run to Walmart, and then that's it. It's beautiful outside, so I'm going to put my windows down, blast some Drake, and be real ratch for all these white people to enjoy. So, But yeah, that's really it. That's all that's been going on in my life. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> but 
I'm at the point where, you know, it, what's going to happen is going to happen and there's nothing that I'm going to be able to do to change that. So, I mean, it's pointless to place blame on, I got to put some baby hairs down. It's pointless to place blame because I don't know why it happened and I don't know what to do to stop it. I just have to pray and, you know, hope that my time will come. Our time as a family will come for us to have a little one. That's all. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.